Land Rover Discovery 3, that one there. Ta da! We are gonna upgrade the brakes. Now, this should be the same, same, but slightly different than the Discovery 4. Certainly be the same for a Range Rover Sport 2005. So, this is the diesel car. So, the diesel car had the crappiest, rubbish, rubbish, rubbishest brakes um, because it's a diesel and it doesn't go very fast. The V8 petrol had much, no well, much nicer, slightly bigger discs, but then they saved these monster discs for the supercharged V8 um, and they gave it much better discs on the front for better braking for obvious reasons. So, we have upgraded our Project Discovery 3. We have upgraded one side. Come and have a look. Come and have a look. We have upgraded the brakes on this side. So these lovely, so what have we got here? So we've got these monster 380 millimeter discs. We've got these Brembo style six pot calipers. I'll explain a bit. We haven't got any of this sliding action going on. We've just got six pistons directly pinching onto the brake. We have got drilled and grooved brakes for better braking. These keep your brakes cleaner. Um, they look good as well, don't they, Gary? Yeah, they look the part. They do look the part. Um, what else have we got going in our favour? So we're going to dissipate more heat. These are vented. The standard ones are vented, but all the air can fly out and keep it cool because we like things running nice and cool. So that is what we're going to do. And the amazing thing is Land Rover have designed all the brakes so they all bolt straight on. Even the hydraulic hose bolts straight on. So let's go back up to the table. Come round the come round behind me, Gary, on this side of the table. It's all laid out. And we will show everybody what we have got. Right. So on this side of the table is all the stuff we took off. On this side of the table is all the lovely stuff we're going to replace it with. So let's start with the brake disc. We've already had a quick look. So this is our standard brake disc. This is what we took off our project car. Look at the state of this. It's absolutely crumbled. And then if we, this is our new one, which is obviously new and shiny. But if I just put those on top of each other, you can see the difference in diameter. And we all know the bigger diameter you break out, the more force you've got. Now one note to, if you are running your car with 19 inch alloys, those little piggly cute ones, you're not going to get these monster discs inside your 19 inch. You're going to have to go to 20 inch or bigger alloys, right? Which we already have done, so not a problem. Right. Actually, I was I was talking with Gary, and I said, look how thin it is here. You wonder how rusty it would have to get for the disc to sort of snap. So for fun, I'm just digressing here. Um, I look, but it's actually still got a fair bit of thickness, but it. It's interesting how thin it is at this point. So this is clearly the thinnest point here as I've cut through. So actually I didn't need to panic too much, but we digress. Right, what else are you gonna need to change? Your back plate is not big enough. This is a dust stone shield. <laughs> the disc's bigger than the back plate, so that's never gonna be any good. Now the interesting thing is this is rusty. You can see it's all rusted through here. Oh, behind here, you got that on the camera, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, that's all rubbish. Now, interestingly, this new, this is a genuine Land Rover item. So this is uh, aluminium now, so they this will not rust. And it's also lighter weight, although that one wasn't heavy. But So that's, you're gonna need to upgrade your back plates. They're different on the left and the right, obviously. Right, what else are we gonna upgrade? Right, brake pads. What? Look at these things. So you can see your braking is gonna vastly improve just on the surface area you've got on those. So we've got the super trucks. Whoa, three stickers, Ultimax 2. I wonder what was wrong with the Ultimax yeah. 1. Who knows? Right, so Ultimax 2. These are good, we like these. Right, and then let's have a look. So the caliper, you stay there, Gary. So this is the caliper. So this is actually an, an, an alloy body caliper you can see the brake pistons in there. Um, they're handed. When you mount them on the car, the bleed nipple has always got to be at the top. So that's how you can tell which side it is when you go to bolt it on. Make sure that's at the top. Not like that. Right. Um, that all comes complete nicely, ready to put the pads in, and we'll show you how to do that. The old style caliper has only got 
two pistons here and that pushes against the disc and the thing that always messes up on these is these bellows it's all supposed to slide it's all supposed to slide in and out look you can see it moving a bit there but they seize up and then it doesn't work and then you get uneven forces where it just pushes on the rear pad not the front one so you're better off getting rid of that it's just not that reliable but cheap to make right other little bits so these torque screws that hold the disc on, that's the one that goes in that little hole there and holds the disc on. You'll see, we're going to do the whole conversion in a minute. Um, those Torx heads go. So in the kit, we're going to supply this kit on the website. Always put a new one on. For the money, it's always worth doing it because otherwise you're going to... Um, bit you have to reuse, we'll look at adding it to the kit, but I'm not promising, is the hydraulic and the two copper... I think we'll try and add the two copper rings in, but I haven't found them yet. Let me just source those. Right, and then we're going to throw in some new bolts for bolting the back plate on. And you will need a new wear pad sensor. Um, and that's going to go into your disc, onto your pads. And I'll show you how that clips on. Um, right, that's all done. I'm going to catch my breath, and then we'll get some bits over, and we'll start bolting it on the car. Right, so let's get started. So I've done the other side, and I think I know what I'm doing, so I'm gonna talk Gary for it. So you've done a couple of things with brakes before, haven't you, Gary? Yeah, done but a few. Done a few, but you've never taken one of these whole, you've never taken the whole caliper off from that before. So I'm gonna talk Gary through it. Um, so bear with us as we go through it, but it, it could help in a way. Right, so what we need to do here, we have got to take off, in essence, we've got to take off the brake caliper, the brake disc, and the brake back plate. We do not need to take off the hub or the hub nut. So we've got the wheel off, we've got it safely jacked up, um, and we haven't got a carpenter's hammer in sight. You'll have to read the comments on my other videos to know. Right, the first thing we're going to do is undo this disc retaining nut. Now we're doing that first, not because we need to get it off, but we are going to stick a screwdriver in the discs while we've got the caliper still on. Now I'm not sure how recommended a technique this is, but... You're just going to stick that in there, Gary. Get one of your, your worst screwdrivers. Give it a wiggle so it goes in. That's it. You got it. Right, and that'll just stop it turning. Now, these, depending how many times they've been on or off, these little Torx head things can be a bit of a pig. So Gary's got the old impact driver. So as you hit that, it gives it a little twist. And it obviously wakes it up as well. So, right, there you go, Gary. Grab that. Grab a little, grab a little hammer. And without hitting, you, hitting yourself... Give out a couple of taps while sort of while twisting it. You got it. Or oh, more aggressive than that. Go on. Right. Hopefully that's loosened it. So you want to grab the socket now. Grab and then have a go. That should. You might need that other adapter. Yeah. Well, let's see if we're lucky. Now this could be the most tricky part of the job, depending on how long it's been on there. So make sure you keep it pressed in, Gary. Oh, all right. No, I would do it the other way, Gary. I'm always easier to push down, so put it in that way. All right. And now if it's if it's giving, a, if it ain't gonna go, no. Oh, it's got it. Well done. I say keep it pushed in, or you'll round it. I'd always recommend getting it if you're doing this. Always get a new one of those because it doesn't take a lot for them to get. That's already getting a bit slippy on there, I reckon, Gary, on that yeah. socket. Can you feel it wanting to twist out? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and what we're going to put on it, we'll put some um, copper grease when we put it back in. Because yeah. otherwise, it, yeah, they get all dry and rusty and horrible. But yeah, right, good. Right, we're... right now, before we get too excited, what do we need to do next? Um, da -da 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 -da. Right, let's have a look at taking the hydraulic hose off. So spin it, spin it round a bit. I'm gonna move this torch a bit so I've got a little bit more light just on the back. Oh, there you go. Right, so we have to, we are gonna undo, you can see how caked up and rubbish this is. We are gonna undo the hydraulic hose here. So 15 mil socket on that one, Gary. And then we'll, we'll whip this off. Careful, there's two copper washers. There's one each side of this banjo fitting. Um, obviously, just make sure we, we collect those as well. 
and have a bottle handy ready to collect the dripping fluid. So I've drained the other side already, so I won't have too much. All right, and is that on there? Is that not? If it's just, that looks like it's not a 15, Gary. Or oh, was I wrong? That was a 15. I lied to you, did I? Try for one. Yeah, if it. Does that look better? Yeah. There you go. My bad. Now, what we'll do, take the bolt out. What we'll do is, we'll, don't worry about dripping it a little bit. It's just I don't want it gushing everywhere. Can you see that copper washer? You've got to take the bolt out because you won't get it in the header. I want to. Oh, there you go. It will come out the hose. Yeah. Hold the copper washer and unspin yeah. the nut. I'll do it. I'll hold the, I'll hold the washer. You spin the nut. Go on. That's it. It's going on it. Yeah. We could do getting a couple of new washers. For that right. So there you go. That's the copper washer off, and then that bolt comes out, Gary. Yeah. So push that bolt. That'll just push out that banjo fitting now. Just push it back out. Oh. Actually, how many washers it got on it? Has it got two washers on it? There's another one there, yeah. I reckon it's got, a, they doubled up. Never seen that before. I don't think that's, that's the original. Do you want me to hold it again? Yeah. Oh, come on. Now we'll get the pliers on that. Right, we'll just get that off. Right, I'm under the car now. I get all the best jobs, don't I, Gary? So what we're going to try and do now is take the caliper off. Actually, before we take the caliper off, before we get to that bit of fun, what you're going to do is grab that screwdriver out the disc there, right? And then you're going to jam it in behind there. Actually, I'll come out. I'm, all right. Um, all right. So like I showed you, you want to get right in here, right in behind there. Like that. Like that. And then lever forward. And you should feel it sort of move. That's it. That's it. And you can see these bellows. As you do that, well, watch the bellows there. Watch the, you see that? And what you've done is there is, is you've loosened the grip of the brake pad. So that's perfect. Yeah. When we've got the bolts out, that caliper will fall off easy. Otherwise, we'll be having to fight it off. That's brilliant. Right. Okay. Here we go. Back underneath. Back underneath. Right. So you've got your two bolts. Now you can see we've got one bolt here. I cast a shadow every time I go. That's it. So what size you got on there, Gary? It's a 21. 21. Yeah, yeah. Right. See if you can do that. You might need to get the long lever bar out on that. <laughs> Yeah, no, don't, you'll be straining, so get your long bar. Don't have the extension on the long bar, perhaps on that bottom one. And let me make sure you're going the right way as well. I'm well poised to that. So, yeah, you're pushing down on that, which is correct. All right. Well done. Right, and uh, you might need the extension on the top. And once you've got that loose, you should get that with the socket. So as long as it's loose, Gary, that's fine. Yeah. He's gonna have another go. Right, that'll do. Right, now let me move the let me move the bottle there now. Right, can you get uh, can you see that top one? He's right up there. Yeah, that's Yeah. That's loosened it. That's loosened it, yeah. Give it another one. And then you get the socket on it then. Don't want you hurting yourself, Gary. Straining yourself. Right, yeah, so what not extension. You ever heard of Frank Spencer? Uh, I've heard, yeah, I've heard the name. Name, maybe we were having a discussion earlier. But all the. Oh, that's it. You got it? Oh, he's tight. No, we're back on. Right, we'll get those two earned done, but I think you can see those. There's the 12 sided nuts. So I'll let Gary strain away in private and get those get those off. And then we'll come back when we've got those out and we'll whip that caliper off. All right, there we go. We've got those loose. Um, you can get a bit of WD 40 just down in behind here. Um, if I point the camera in the right place. Um, because there's a little bit of the thread, when you look at the bolt, there's a little bit of a thread at the end. You see the last few threads there are rustier. And they do protrude just behind the disc. Um, but there you go, that's the bolt you're getting out. You've got the other one out, Gary? We've got them both out now. Yeah, so, and we're going to reuse those. I'm debating whether if you're buying a kit, whether we put those bolts in. I'll have a look how much they are. I mean, you're unlikely to strip them because they're big girt bolts. And with a bit of copper grease back on them and reinserted they'll be fine give them a clean up right put those in the pot right what are we up to next gary 
that caliper will just come off now. Now you may have a brake wear sensor, but we're going to put a new brake wear sensor on so you can just cut that off. But there we go. That's the caliper. That's the old caliper. Um, the pads are okay in there. Um, he still seems to work, but he's as rusty as poop. So we're gonna we're gonna get rid of that. All right, so you can chuck that out of the way somewhere. That disc. Look at that disc. Look at the corrosion in there. Those sort of fins and look at the amount. It's just flaking. That is that is right. That disc should just tap off a little tap with the hammer there, Gary, from behind in that little area you got there. All right, now rotate it a bit. If you, that's it, and then give it another little tap. And again, that's it. Oh, he's tight. I might have to get a bit more. That's it. He's giving up now. Oh, look at the rust come out of that. This is just getting sharp. I'm gonna have a look at the inside of this disc. It's got plenty of wear. Not, it's not worn out. It's not. Yeah, don't get it too too jammed. That's it. Try and keep it coming off parallel. I don't think anyone else's is gonna be as bad as this. That's it. Let's have a look at the inside of that. Whoa, that is fierce. That is is absolutely. Yeah, it's, that's just completely rusted, and um, yeah, the whole that that wouldn't take a lot for that complete rim to come off that brake disc. Now that is almost dangerous. That's scary. Um, yeah, look at the whole chunks of well, that light's not helping there. Let me look at that chunks of just complete brake disc here. Right, there you go. That's all good fun. I think I think we're happy we're doing this, aren't we? Yeah. Right, what have we got left on there? We're going to clean all this up. So this is your ABS sensor here. Um, that can stay on. Check the check the rubber gator behind Gary. Just check that that's all not got any rips or tears in it. There's no sign of oil. You'd have oil and yeah. grease coming out. Ah, right. So let's remove that brake shield now. Um, this could be tricky, but that's that Torx T30. We had that Torx T30 ready, didn't we? Yeah, down, here. down here. Now you only use the impact driver again. Now these are, judging by the amount of rust and the rust on everything, this could be fun. Right, tilt it towards me a bit, Gary, so I can, that, can I see what's happening. Right, there you go. Right. So let's have a go. You got your hammer. Now make sure you get it in there properly. All right, that's it. Get out your way. Give it a good whack on. Good whack. Because you want to shock it a bit. Part of the impact driver's job is to shock it. So there's four of those. But look at that brake shield. That brake shield's completely, completely rusted out there as well. So I'm quite happy with doing all this. So this is an early Disco 4. This is a 54 plate. So that's 2004. Um, so it must be one of the first, first production ones. That one looks pretty rusted out there, Gary. That's been exposed to the... Yeah. You got anything to get on it or not? Should do. Should make sure you're square onto that. Uh, now, if, if they don't go, we'll have a look at that. If we don't go, what we might come and do, Gary, is grind a slot across them with the angle grinder. Yeah. And then we'll change this to a screwdriver bit in that impact driver. Yeah. So let me have a look at this before we get into too much of a pickle. Right. Right, we were lucky with three out of four, but that fourth one there, we had to, we put a little angle grinder, put a slot in the top of him, and use the impact driver with the, where's that impact driver? Oh, there we go, sorry, you're, you're ahead of me, Gary. Um, with the flat bit in it, and that's got that one undone. So, I think sometimes just the heat from the angle grinder helps. And then we should, yeah, the other, whip those others off. There we go, yes, yeah, so let's have a look at those. So there the, so yeah, we definitely need to include the new ones of those with the kit. A new back plate. 
We're waiting for those new back plates to arrive. And they're all the same, those four. So yeah, that's there. You can see the Torx heads get a little bit. There we go. We've got one, two, three. Let's see Gary get that off. And then we'll let Gary get on and clean that up. Look at the state of that. Um, it's one. not. Oh, there's another one. Sorry. <laughs> right back on your talks. So my bad. There is another one down the bottom there. There you go. We were lucky with that one as well. But that. Let's have a look. That stone shield is pretty ropey, isn't it? That is not looking the best. Right then. But. We'll get that new one. So we're going to clean up all that mud there because look at the, the mud's caked on it. We're going to get all that cleaned up and nice. Uh, but the the hub's tight enough. It doesn't feel like there's any play in that. Um, so we're going to get it cleaned up and we'll come back and start. We'll be ready to start reassembling then. Right, so here we go. We're at the car. We've got our copper grease. Must have copper grease for this job. There we go, copper grease. Lovely. Right. Um, so we're going to, we've laid the parts out we're going to do first. So we're going to put the, the dust shield on. So that goes round, that's it, round the back of the hub. The I'll bolts do. line up. Put one in to secure it, and I'll go around with the copper grease. Okay. Yeah. Right, I'll go on with you, yeah. So yeah, grease it all up. Because if you ever come to redo this. Oh, there you go. So there's, there's five of these. There's one on the video. And these are all the same as when we took it off. Gary spent half a day yesterday cleaning all this up. He's done a really good job, cleaned up all the... We like... The nice thing about working on your own cars as opposed to putting into a garage is you can't blame them garages. They've yeah. just got to make money and it's just time. And you don't necessarily want to be paying a garage labour rates just for them to clean your car. But when we work on your own car, it's nice to take a pride in it, get it all clean and tidy, get all the mud off. Right, so yeah, we can get those roughly tight with the, we might just nip them up with the socket set. I'd, I'd whip those up, Gary, yeah. That should be a 10 mil, I'm guessing. Yeah. We don't want those coming out in behind the disc. But they're only small, so you just want to nip them up. That's it. That's enough. Yep. Makes a nice musical noise. <laughs> See that on Mighty Car Mods, they always pretend to make a, a musical noise on the intercoolers, Gary. You ever no, watched their videos? No, no, I haven't seen that. You haven't seen those? So now you're going to have to, in a Mighty Car, and a nod to Mighty Car Mods, you have to go and play a tune on that. Go on, give, give a little bang. Oh, there you go. Right. Okay. Right. So that right now we're on for the disc. So we've got a nice shiny disc. Ah, oh, I didn't mention Gary. Show me, show me, show me. Right. The discs are handy. When you get them, they will have left hand and right hand. And it's, it's nothing more complicated than the way these grooves go. So the left hand one, which is here, as we're looking at it, this is the outer face. Um, the arrows, as they go outwards, will point clockwise. They're the opposite on the other way. I'll show you that. Let's get Gary. Right, when you put this on, you've got to line up that countersunk hole there with the threaded hole on here. Gary knew that, though, because he did the other side. Did you do it right when you put it on the other side, Gary? Or did you... Yeah, yeah, did it right. You did it right? Yeah. He's not fessing up. No, don't act surprised. No. <laughs> Can we do one of those vote things? 
I was watching YouTube the other day and you can do like a vote thing. And it's like, vote here if you think Gary mucked it up first time. <laughs> vote here if you think Gary's blagging. Right, while well, Gary bolts that up, let me show you the other side. So again, so as you look, this is the right side of the car. And you see that the arrows, this is the outer face again. And you see if you put an arrow at the top, there won't be an arrow at the top. I did it just for effect. You see they are pointing anti-clockwise. So make sure you get the right disc or the correct disc on the correct side. Right, have you finished that now, Gary? All done. Right, so now, so that's all done. Now we can't tighten this up yet because it will just spin. So we've just got it there. What we'll do is we'll put the caliper on and we'll just jam it against the caliper. But that's all done for now. Right, next thing. It is easier to mount the brake pads into this caliper off the car. Now, note, this little spring here, um, how do I explain it? It's got like two outriggers here. So the two outriggers are at the bottom of the caliper. So we've already discussed that the bleed nipples need to be at the top. I've just noticed it's got two bleed nipples. They need to be at the top. Um, so make sure that the two outriggers are at the bottom when you assemble it. Right then, go Gary. You can push that spring. Ah, I see. So you just take the pressure off the take the pressure off those pins, and then you can slide the pins out. Cool. All right now, all the pads are the same. There's no pad is any different to another one. And then you feed those in from underneath. So you're better off holding it upside down. He's got it. Right, now, which side do they go in from? It's in from that side, is it? Yeah. yeah. I think it's your hand, Gary. Yeah. Oh. There you go. Oh, I don't know. Have I not got it up enough? I'll push the pin. Yeah. Oh. Right, hold on a minute. I think we're going to be easier holding it upside down. Hold on. Right, so we wrestled there. It's tricky trying to do it all on video. But make sure the if you look at the nut side of this, because that side's got a nut on one side and a dome on the other, let me just have a pull that pin out again, Gary. I just want to show the point. The pointed end of the pin goes in and um, from this nut side, and then you just got to line it up. It's not as that's it. You have to press against the spring. It's a bit of a rig, isn't it? Yeah. You might be as well. To... You should better do it by hand, but you might need to give it a little gentle tap. So don't be too brutal, but I think sometimes it's easier just to give it a gentle tap. I'm sure someone's gonna tell me I'm using the wrong hammer again, Gary. Right, so we're all in, the pads are all back. Right, what else do we need to take with us? We will need the, we'll need the hydraulic fit in. Yeah. We'll come back for the, I've forgotten what it's called, the brake bear. get that over and then we'll need to put those two 12 sided bolts back in yeah right, let me just grab you those right so we've got these these are the big 12 sided ones we took out we put a bit of copper grease on those now these are screwing into the actual caliper so which is nice because we're not using it going into an old thread so you've got to just position that right it's a bit of a fiddle behind there We'll let Gary fiddle and we'll have a look when he's done it. Right, he's got the first one in. I'd put the second one in before you go. Yeah. The second one's a lot easier, obviously, because it's, it's only one direction of movement. Right, what I'll do now, we'll get those finger tight and then I'll, I'll get underneath the car so we can just see all that from the back. Right, so I'm joining you from under the car. And Gary's just going to point out those two bolts that he's just put in. There's a 12-sided one, that one there, and that one at the top there. Now, these need doing up quite tight. Credit to Bodsey's Brake Bible. Google that if you want to. He's saying the torque settings for these are 275 newton meters, um, which is above what our torque wrench goes to, which he predicted. He said your torque meter only go up to 200 newton meters. 
So we're just going to do these up as tight as we can. Um, but yeah, they're a big old bolt. So you got those super tight. Do that bottom one a little bit more, Gary. You ain't going to strip the thread on those. That's it, and a little bit more on that top one. That's it, lovely. Right, the next job and last job we've got to do is we've got to connect the banjo fitting. So get a bit of paper, paper cloth, Gary, and just clean off so that we've got, because otherwise we'll have it, the, the grit will be in the copper washer. You see what I mean? So just clean off both this whole end yeah. fit in there. Cleanliness is next to glod, glodly, godliness when it comes to brakes. Get that all clean. Yeah. And then you've got to take the little bung out the back of that. So there's a little there's a little rubber bung in the back of the caliper. And then you need to get your wash your bolt that's on the floor there. Take the first washer off. So you've got one copper washer next to the head. All right, and then put that through. And then spin the other copper washer on the other end. So the banjo fitting is sandwiched between two copper washers. Yeah, you might have to thread it in. It might, I don't know if it'll slide. Let's just have a quick look at that, Gary, if you could model that beautifully. There we go, All right? And then you've got a, now the, the banjo fitting's got a little tail and the little tail lines up with the little slot they've cleverly given you in the, and spin it in, don't cross thread it. Should spin by hand all the way up and then just tighten that up. All right, so we'll get that tightened up. Yep, so that's the 14 millimeter socket on that. Now this one you won't want to go so tight on, Gary. You need to get reasonably tight because it's into aluminium. Yeah, that'll be a right. little bit, little bit tighter. That'll do. Right, um, and so we'll have a look at bleeding that later. Um, right, next thing we got to do, Gary's got to tighten torques that. Now that the torque setting for that front one there is 35 newton meters, according to Bobsy's Bobsy's brake bible. So we're just gently putting a. Now I'm not going to put it there, Gary. I'm going to put it at the front there, so it's not in amongst all the sort of more delicate bits of the. And then we just. That's it. Is that 35 your calibrated hands, Gary? That 35 newton meters. Good. Right. So I think that's it. So I won't cover bleed. Oh, what will? I won't cover bleeding, and I won't cover the wear pad sensor replacement. Um, we'll do that separately. Um, and I'll put a little link to the wear pad one there. But that's it. That's the brake upgrade to Brembo's. Now, there may be some questions. So what are the questions going to be? The questions are going to be, so you've put these big brakes on the front. What are you going to do about the rear? Now, most of your braking on a car is done at the front. You are going to have changed. You are going to have more braking force on the front now to the rear. But if there's any danger of the rear locking up, it will your abs will account for that now as far as i can see the brake servo and the brake master cylinder the servo was slightly different on the supercharge but i think that was due to the air pressures changing because it's forced induction um and the brake master cylinder seems the same but you are changing your brakes there are things you need to consider um i think it's perfectly safe for me to drive and i'm happy but you need to satisfy yourself if you're not familiar with these things whether you're happy with that i think compared to these rusty old crocs of rubbish that we had on there with c sliders and everything i am more than happy that this is going to give me superior braking i'm convinced that land rover only fitted these because of cost um but you need to make your own decision on that um they're going to look great right we do do these calipers painted. We are just doing some changes to the paint booth at the moment. So we will try and get these available in a range of colours. The black at the end of the day is going to radiate heat better than the others. So we've popped the black on. If you see the car again, we may have changed it to orange or something. We'll try and get that done. But there we go. That's where we're at today. Brake upgrade done. Disco 3 to Brembo 6 pots. Good luck with that.